Hi, how are you? All right, so the 40-day meditation challenge is over, but as far as I'm concerned, this is only the beginning, at least for me. Please let me know how it's been for you guys. Some of you I've heard from over on Facebook, and it's been a lot of fun sharing stories and things that have come up during the 40 days in our meditations, as well as you know, making sure that everyone is still on track in the game and um, and yeah now it's over and it's been extremely healing for me I feel moist again that sponge was sucked dry and now just creating 10 minutes for myself every day focusing in on my breath finding quietness and writing down five things that I'm grateful for has moistened me up again and I cannot even tell you but I think that it shows on my face that I have a different kind of glow because I can feel it and this is one thing that I know for sure now is that we have all of the answers inside of us yes there are times when we have to consult our friends or therapists and you know uh, professionals uh, but I think, and especially if we have um, a lot of problems or deep problems, but I think, you know, on, on a daily basis, regardless of that, the more time or the more regular you can be in just sitting down quietly, cross-legged, on the floor, in a chair, wherever it might be, sit upright, close your eyes, inhale and exhale, and just notice what thoughts are inside of your head. Just notice. Notice what is occupying you. Notice what is throwing you off. Um, maybe you won't notice it at first when you get started, but as you continue to do it, you will be able to separate your thoughts. And you will notice what it is that is making you behave or react to what it is that you're behaving or reacting to. So it's, it is really unbelievable and I now almost feel like I have become like an evangelist. Like whenever somebody, when I bump into somebody unintentionally on the subway and they're like, <clears throat> they're so angry and the world is against them. I sort of just feel like giving them a nudge, you should start meditating, it's really good for you. You will not be sweating this small stuff because you know what? If you go to Calcutta in India, there's a lot of people and that subway, those trains are really crowded and you know what? New York in comp comparison is deserted and it's really clean here too. <laughs> You know, it's like when you start to quiet down your mind, you're not so flustered by things. And that is one thing that I realized and I know had noticed with myself, I was getting very impatient. And I have a lot of patience. I was getting annoyed at littlest things. I was getting angry. I was really angry. And um, I just felt like my neck and my shoulders were tight. And things were just not going the way that I wanted them to go. So doing this meditation has been very healing for me. And um, I will definitely continue to do it because I know that I really need it. This is my medication. I need this. I need this to stay centered. And it was funny, uh, or it's a little embarrassing actually, in one of my meditations I got smacked like boom, like really smack, this voice came into me and said, Anita, you are feeling so sorry for yourself. Shame on you. And I immediately was taken back and thought, what? I am not feeling sorry for myself. Who are you talking to? I'm the last person to feel sorry for myself. And then I walked through the day and I was like, yeah, you know what? I have been feeling sorry for myself. And I was sort of shocked. And it was great really at the same time because, wow, who am I to feel sorry for myself? I have such a good life. I have been so blessed 
But I think that the writing down the five things that I'm grateful for really made an impact because it showed me how ungrateful I was. You know, I I had turned into one of those, pardon me, but you know what I always say, those New Yorkers who feel so very entitled that, you know, you could buy anything if you have the money for it. And, you know, you should give me your time. I I I had I became one of those people. And um, I am so glad I got smacked because, you know, sometimes we need to get smacked. Elena Brower has, you know, posts videos every week on, I think it's Daily Love, it's called, and she calls it the mindful smack. And some of the smacks, you know, hit you hard and you realize, yes, I might have to look into that. Um, and uh, this was a smack, really, that my intuition gave me. Another thing that I became aware of was how I've been living so in the future. I have been living according to what I believe I'm going to have in the future. And you know what? A lot of the things that I have believed that I will have in the future, I have gotten. And there are some that I haven't gotten. Uh, but it had, it had come to a point where... It wasn't good. I wasn't living in the moment. And I told this to a client of mine, and she sort of looked at me, but Anita, you're, you're a yoga teacher. You should know this. And I'm like, yeah, I know it. Intellectually, we know a lot of things. I know a lot of things. But it's not until you become aware of it yourself exactly where the land is laying, so to speak. And I'm embarrassed. Yes, it's true. That's, I have. And that's the reason I've been behaving a lot, in the way that I've been, been behaving with certain things. And now it's just really been the time to clean it up the mess. You know what? Life gets messy and we just have to clean it up. And we have to take responsibility for our actions and for our thoughts and um, take the time out to figure things out. At least that's what I, I had the intention of doing, and so far, so good. Uh, one last thing that I will share with you, and I sort of find that this is funny, the first time I saw the Forrest Gump movie, you know, when he's sitting on the bench and he's saying, life is like a box of chocolate, you never know what you're going to get. Well, I never understood that sentence. I'm like, what do you mean? You Like a box of chocolate, of course, you know what you're going to get. You can pick whatever it is that you want. And now I sit back and I'm like, I think that's true. We all have good intentions and we move along our journey. And sometimes that detour comes and we might not be aware of it. And most of the time we're not aware of it until we've taken the detour and we get back on the path again. And that's what happened to me. I had to take a little detour. I'm much stronger, much clearer. I have much more confidence about myself because of it. So I'm extremely grateful for that. And as much as I believe in sankalpas and creating intentions, not everything might happen exactly the way that you intended to. And now I'm starting to understand Forrest Gump a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys, have you guys understood that? I said that to my husband and my cousin uh, visiting from Norway here. I said, I never understood that. They're like, really? And my husband said, well, Anita, you're growing up. <laughs> yes, I'm finally growing up. Anyway, guys, so that's my story. There was nothing I could teach you in these 40 days about meditation. Maybe now, moving forward, there is a little something I can teach you. All I could do was to share my little uh, epiphanies here, and hopefully it can you know, help you in some way, maybe uh, inspire you at least to create some time in your own life to focus in on your breath and get some clarity in your thoughts and know what's inside of there and why you're reacting the way that you do. All right, so let me know how you're doing and I will be back with lots and lots and lots of workout videos. See you soon. Bye.